Hey, welcome back to our channel. Today's a new day and we kind of had an idea, so let's get on with it. Okay, so our idea has been uh, what to do with the room we're in. We built this room that works really well for us and we keep thinking, what do we do? What should we add to this room? What would be great? And we thought really long and really hard and there's been a lot of, lot of controversy on our end uh, between myself and a couple interns and trying to figure out what to do. And we thought, hey, why don't we do Atmos? Why don't we look into that? And I was like, okay, we'll look into it. Well, I looked into it and my Apollos won't do it. I can't do Atmos efficiently with the Apollos that I had. I had a X8 and a X4, great, great interfaces, sounded great, um, really easy to use, um, but could not do Atmos with them like I wanted to. So I went on the hunt. I've been on the hunt for a couple weeks now, actually. And I came across this guy. This is the Antelope Orion Studio. Um, I cannot tell you exactly what the year on this is. It might have it on the bottom. No, nope, it doesn't. It might tell me. I don't know. It doesn't tell me. Anyways, um, we got the Orion Studio here. Uh, it's Thunderbolt and USB, so you can use it with pretty much whatever computer you want. Mac, PC. I don't know if you can run it with Linux, but Mac or PC, those are kind of the two main ones definitely run it with both of those because it does USB and it does Thunderbolt. Now it does Thunderbolt 2, which we're gonna have to adapt if we choose that. I think we're just gonna use regular USB because it's USB 2, I believe, and our dock does USB 2 with our Mac. So I think that's what we're gonna do. But let's kind of go over the features we got of it here. Um, it's kind of an interesting piece of hardware. Um, this unit has the same amount of IO that I had with the Apollo, with both Apollos actually. With two Apollos, this has actually more IO. According to the manual, it's 32 in, 32 out. Um, I don't know where the extra two, I've only been able to count up to two, up to 30 maybe. There's two that are missing. Um, and I can't figure out where they are. But anyways, we'll start with the front panel. So you got the on off, this right here. And it feels like a normal button. It's your normal on off. I have read through the manual where you can shut this off via software. So I'm kind of interested to see what that's like. Um, it's got four inputs on the front. Um, they can be used for guitar pedals, all sorts of stuff, because they are high, high Z inputs. So you get four of them. You only get two with the Apollos. Um, talk back mic, um, rotary knob of some sort. And then you've got an AB for your speakers, along with um, some gain stuff for mic preamps. Um, a screen, which is kind of your L normal LCD screen here. Um, and then it's got two headphones which is what the Apollos have, they have two headphones. But what this has that the Apollos don't have is reamp. They have dedicated reamp outs. So we can send out to our amplifiers and actually effectively reamp the way that we want. Um, and then you get on the back side here, um, you've got two sets of inserts for channels 11 and 12. You've got eight mic pre's on the back. So there's four in the front, eight on the back, which makes it a total of 12 mic pre's. Uh, your BNC out for your word clock if you have word clock, I actually run word clock to all my other pieces of gear. So this will, this will clock. And from what I'm told, Antelope has like some of the best clocking in the world. So that's what I'm told, you know, leave some comments below if you think otherwise. Um, then you got your spit if in and out along with your monitor A and B. So you can kind of do a, two different sets of speakers. Um, and then there's 16 out on the D subs here, um, the DB25s that will be used probably when we do Atmos. Um, it'll probably also be used when we use some of our other gear in the rack here, but mostly, mostly Atmos um, with two sets of ADAT in and out. Um, and then your power and your digital connections to the computer, your USB Thunderbolt. So this unit we got used, obviously it's, it's probably one of the first generation ones, but it's a sleek looking unit. Just looking at it here, it's for being used. The thing looks pristine, but, um, they, they make great stuff from what I hear. Uh, we're gonna be doing some tests on it here later this week as we get it set up and running with the computers and the speakers and and everything else that we've got going in the studio here. Um, so that's kind of this in a nutshell and that's kind of what we're doing with it. 
Um, the more we get into this and get into the, the antelope here and its architecture, I hear it has great patch bay options. It's like a digital patch bay where you can patch things from A to B, like channel one into channel four and all this crazy stuff. You can send stuff to different places without having to change stuff in your DAW. It's kind of crazy. So we're gonna play with that a little bit and kind of see where that gets us um, along with the mixers. It's supposed to have zero latency, which um, everybody claims to have zero latency, but we'll see. We'll see what it does, if it actually has true zero latency or if it's just uh, close, you know. But in all, all else, this is gonna be our centerpiece for the foreseeable future um, until we get maybe another one if we really like the antelope stuff. I've heard the mic pre sound really good, so we'll do a test on that. Uh, so be on the lookout for those videos. And uh, you know what? If you've liked this video or our other ones, hit subscribe and we'll get a, we'll get a notification that you've, you've liked our stuff and we'll keep putting up more content. Um, and then you can hit subscribe and the notification bell and the notification just gives you more dings when we, we post stuff. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next time and go make some music.